is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Have you ever heard of a man by the name of William Branham? He had, without a doubt, since the days that Jesus walked in the flesh, the greatest miracle ministry I ever read about. There's no guesswork on his part. He knew when people were going to be healed. He never missed it. Well, I have a guest that operates in the t that same type of presence of God. He was telling me that he many times, almost every time, he sees what are known as panoramic visions. He'll see a light over someone and he'll pick that person out. And then he'll see photographs of their entire life right above their head, their past, their present, their future. And he was mentored by an individual that said, she's in heaven now, but she said he would transmit the most supernatural anointing to people in the last days. Are you interested in yeah. hearing yeah. from him? I, I have to tell you something. Uh, I read in the Bible that the Gentile believer is supposed to provoke the Jew to jealousy. So my friend James Maloney has been provoking me to jealousy, but I just found out he's not Gentile. He just found out that he's Jewish. That's right. <laughs> so I don't know. How can you be provoking me to jealousy? You're provoking me. Uh, People see a, a flame of fire. Explain that when you speak many times. Well, Sid, what many times happens is as I'm ministering after the word, sometimes I enter into what's termed in Hosea 12:10 multiplied visions. It's what we term a seer operation, prophetic seer operation. And so what happens is the person that's, you know, I feel impressed to call someone out and I have them stand in front of me and, and uh, they welcome the anointing and the congregation is drawing on that gifting and anointing. And then I just have this overwhelming sense that an angelic person comes to my side. I've actually had people as well as myself since the weightiness of this angel and um, it's like a flame of fire. It's, I, I can't describe it, but just that way, people, hundreds have seen this pillar kind of fire just hover over the person and I and just drop on us. And when it does, extraordinary things happen. Uh, speaking of extraordinary things, I mean, uh, you, you should have been at, at uh, a meal that I recently had with James. Uh, I mean, you were telling me one thing after another. Tell me about the person with the tattoo. <laughs> that, you like that one, I do. You? I yeah, do. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, out in Anaheim, California, there was a um, drug addict that had just newly gotten saved, just a couple of weeks, and he was so embarrassed, precious brother, because not only did he have needle marks in his arm, hundreds of them on both arms, but tattoos and they were all demonic. I mean, they were just grotesque. 
And he said, you know, I just want to serve Jesus, but I'm so embarrassed because I've been a drug addict and I have hepatitis C and this and that and look at these needle marks. And I just saw the hands of Jesus in a vision, just put his hands on. And 30 seconds later, all the needle marks disappeared. And that, hey, that got, that got him excited. And then, and then I said something. I said, just, just, but he said, what about the tattoos? I said, just, just watch what the Lord does. Just wake up in the morning. Just watch what God does. That's how I said it. And he woke up the next morning, and he was there in the bathroom, you know, brushing his teeth. And all of a sudden, he felt this tingling. He said, I felt this shaking and tingling. You know, you're, you're looking at James and you're saying, boy, that man is such a blessed man, but you don't know what that man has gone through. You see, uh, his, he was born illegitimately. Uh, his mother's husband was in prison. He gets out of prison, recognizes that James could not, because he was in prison, could not possibly have been his son and abuses James, he locks him in a closet, he doesn't eat, he's beaten, uh, he's, he's rejected as a human. How long were you locked in that closet? Uh, nine months straight, and then periodically about six, seven months. Did they give you much food? Oh no, I'd go two and three days with no food. They would just throw a bottle of water, or a little milk, or a half-eaten hamburger in there, and the only time I was taken out was to be beaten and then thrown back in there. So my nose was broken several times, my eye area, ribs, fingers were broken, this and that, you know. But God had mercy and he was adopted by a wonderful family. At 15, he hears the audible voice of God and he becomes a believer in the Messiah. 19, he's off to Bible college, uh, and uh, you had a visitation, you believe it was from the angel Gabriel. What happened? I was doing a lot of fasting and praying. Now that may sound real spiritual, but I was a student at Christ for the Nations in Dallas, Texas, and uh, we didn't have a cafeteria, so I had no money, so I <laughs> had no other choice but to fast. But God used it, and I think it was upon the 14th day that I had a 22-minute visitation from an angelic person. I knew it was not Jesus, because when I was born again, Jesus was the one that appeared to me. So there's a difference, of course. and I. Uh, was given mandates and certain scriptures that I would identify my life ministry calling in the future. And um, it was at that time that I received uh, certain impartations and callings and I, I didn't wait. <laughs> I was 19. I just, you know, hey, I'm ready. Let's go for it. And I just started stepping out as a student. and. God began to give me words of knowledge and wisdom and prophetic words for students, and they, they were quite specific. I, mean, I, I, am, I am in awe of the gifting that you operate in, but in 40 years of the most amazing, amazing ministry, this is the single most profound experience. We'll talk about it when we come back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. My passion is for you to walk in divine health 24-7. That's why I handpicked my favorite healing scriptures from many translations of the Bible, personalized them for you, and made them available in this free ebook. I want you to meditate or pray out loud these scriptures over your life daily and witness the supernatural healing power of God's kingdom come upon you. Download your free Healing Scriptures ebook now. We now return to It's Supernatural. So James was directed to a woman. Her name, she's in heaven now. Her name is Frances 
Metcalf. And Francis had a group of people that would pray, that would do the most phenomenal things. I mean, visitations to heaven, translated to other parts of the world when they would go into trances. Uh, and, and James, she had a face-to-face -face visitation from Jesus. Uh, what did he say to her? Well, she had said many visitations from the Lord, but this particular one, now she's my spiritual mom, that group of women and men, about 70, 80, spent over 53 years, six days a week, eight, nine hours a day, in high praise and worship and intercession as a minister in my hometown. In this particular visitation, Jesus spoke to her and said that there would come a time, an end time ministry, uh, quote unquote, whenever that is, whatever that means, I believe it's now, um, that Jesus face to face spoke to her and said that I will set apart and raise up what he called the Dove Company. She was a forerunning group her and her precious brothers and sisters, and I was sent out from her at uh, 19 years of age. I was a Jesus freak. I admitted I needed some changes in my life and a little bit more sanctification. She said, as you grow and mature, you'll grow into this and you will be an extension. In other words, you will enter into our prayers, our intercessions, our fastings, all that we've spent 50 some years. And it's interesting because a lot of the nations said that I go to, I find out in their writings that they had been there 60 years earlier. So, so they actually paved the way with prayer for James to come there. I told you our God is brilliant. Yes. <laughs> Exciting. Woo. Now, Tell me about the most profound, it happened a couple of years ago, profound experience you've ever had. February of 2012, I was getting ready to go to bed. It was one in the morning, Texas time. All of a sudden, the next thing I know, I'm looking down at a map and I see the city Tashkent, Ubekistan. And I just thought I was in a visionary thing. God was gonna reveal something about the community. But then I saw myself go up, I guess if by car an hour north and an hour east near a city called, in English, Omalti, they pronounce it differently. And about 30 minutes or so, it would be a walk, 45 minutes south of, I mean, the specificness mm. of it. And all of a sudden, I, I'm just standing there on a dirt road. And I realized, it didn't take much discernment, that um, I was translated there, or transported, like Philip in Acts 8, spirit, soul, and body. And there had been gathered there about a thousand people that had just newly been saved, newly born again, but they were sick and afflicted because the evangelists had just talked about salvation, thank God, the greatest miracle, but did not talk about Jesus as the Messiah that could heal. So they were all waiting there to be healed. And out of all of my years of ministry, I, it was the most um, sick, diseased, infirmed group of people I've ever seen. Uh, children with their limbs blown off because of mines. And I'm overwhelmed, but what overwhelmed me the most was I'm standing there thinking I'm alone. What am I supposed to do? It's in the middle of the afternoon. It's the next day, of course. And I look to my left, and Jesus was standing right next to me. It's nice not to be alone. Yes. <laughs> Especially oh. there. And I'm thinking, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> You're here. But it was so amazing, Sid, because he just had this matter of fact look in his eye. And so he just went down in the crowd, and of course, you know, I'm going to follow him. And I just, I would. <laughs> yeah, when you, and I just started following him, and he would go up to, like, there was a man that had consumption or something. He should have been a 180 pound man, looked 90 pounds, uh, curled up in a fetal position, was dying, was uh, hardly able to breathe, just, uh, just, just a lump of flesh. And Jesus looked at me and expected me 
put my hands out to pray for the man. Well, when I did, he entered into my body. And the man saw the hands of Jesus. But there were my hands, but there were Jesus' hands. Hmm. And the man was supernaturally lifted up. It was about four feet from us. No binding, loosing, didn't have to cast out, speak in, do nothing. Just the manifest presence of Jesus lifted him up. He stood straight up and he filled out to the proper weight instantaneously as if he never had the condition. And Jesus, just a matter of fact, just went to another person and another person. I followed him. And so no miracle took less than um, 15 seconds. Do you realize we are living in the days that what James is describing, there will be people unknowns, people no one's ever heard of that are hungering and thirsting for this kind of reality right now. And they will be filled. When we come back, I want him to describe a few of the miracles he saw there. But then I want him to tell you why this was not a pizza dream. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Frances Metcalf was a seer, prophetess, who had amazing encounters in heaven with Jesus. She laid hands on James Maloney when he was a young man, transferring to him a supernatural ability to impart an end time anointing on an army of believers. Now James Maloney wants to empower you to manifest the glory of God throughout the earth. Call now and get James Maloney's Forerunner Foundation Package, which includes his powerful book, Overwhelmed by the Spirit, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching, A People of Signs and Wonders. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9254. In his book and CD teaching series, James Maloney draws from his years of theological training and powerful downloads straight from heaven to help you scripturally understand who the Holy Spirit is and how He will work in your life. Discover your unique God-given gifts and callings. Experience new supernatural strength and power to overcome every obstacle in obtaining your miracle. Receive the same anointing James Maloney received for this appointed time to walk in the miraculous and lead others to Messiah. Become aware of the angelic heavenly realm that wants to assist you and help you fulfill God's purpose and destiny for your life. In James Maloney's three-part audio CD teaching, The People of Signs and Wonders, he includes supernatural prayers of impartation for you to become part of what he calls God's dove company of believers who will reach the world in the end times with miracles, healing, signs, and wonders. Don't miss out on getting James Maloney's Forerunner Foundation Package, which includes his powerful book, Overwhelmed by the Spirit, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching of people of signs and wonders. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9254. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9254 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to it's supernatural. So, so James is translated to the former Soviet Union. He's seeing miracles like few people on earth have ever seen. Uh, tell me about limbs being restored. Well, right? because they had all those mines and their limbs were blowing off. And what broke my heart more than, of course, all of the conditions of the people were, of course, it broke my heart and the compassion of the Lord. And you could just sense it in the Lord just touching them and going amongst them. But what really touched me were the little children. It just broke my heart because they would have a missing hand or a missing leg or foot or whatever because of the minds. And uh, every single one of those children, the leg or hand did not grow out. It just appeared. It's <laughs> the only way I can describe it. Now... I, I asked James, how do you know it wasn't a, just a real vivid dream? How, how do you know this? Well, first of all, he told me that people got reports that they remembered him and they, they remembered someone else with you. Yeah. Uh, well, this, who was this someone else? This, this guy that brown hair and a beard and he, for some strange reason, wore... Um, you know, like a tunic or a, that's the way they worded it, you know. 
Imagine getting reports <laughs> like that. But then, th th this is the most amazing part. When he got back, you were coded with what? Well, let me just say this. When it was all done, they were all crying out, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. And there's now about probably 1,500, 1,800, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. And he's standing right next to me, and Jesus just looks at me. It's been three hours I was ministering with him. And he's phasing in and out. They're seeing me, seeing him. That's the whole Romans 8, manifest sons of God. And, and um, he just looked at me. It was real ironic. The Lord's got an amazing sense of humor. And he, uh, he said, um, am I not creator? Am I not God? Is there anything too hard for me? <laughs> Next thing I remember, I'm sitting on the edge of my bed in Texas, and I look, and all of my clothes was covered with dirt and mud, my shoes and everything. And Is there any way in your, by your bed in Texas that you would have been there filled with mud? Any explanation? Not sitting on the edge of my bed with my wife there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you told me that that God had something for us right now. I want you to, whatever God shows you. Well, I, I tell you, I, I'm just going to lay it out here. There is an amazing manifest presence of God. It's very angelic. The glory is here. It's in the audience. It's upon you, Sid. I told you that just a few minutes ago, the glory. Uh, you know, even though we believe in Jesus, Yeshua is the centrality of everything. We believe in Him as Messiah, yet He does use angelic persons to help aid in ministry of the Holy Spirit. And there is just a powerful manifestation. And I, I'm, I'm really incredibly amazed that the one that particularly stands next to my right side when I move in visionary experience, He's here. And... Um, it's, I, I want to do everything in my power to keep myself from going into the crowd. And <laughs> but I want you to, I want you to, well, I don't know that we may have a mutiny on our hands right now, but I want you to pray as God directs right now. Holy Spirit, I just thank you for the various ways that you operate and move in the lives of your people that this precious group, those that are watching the millions, that there are thousands now that are being touched by the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name, and they are being called to come up higher in the Spirit. They are called to a greater visionary and encounters and dreams and rapturous experiences and as the Holy Spirit wills and directs. All of this is scriptural. All of this is for this Time. We've come to that season for such a time as this. And in Jesus' name, we release that activation right now. So I believe everyone that's watching this program, they're going to have visions like they've never had before. They're going to have dreams like they've never had before. They're going to be caught up. They're going to experience the presence of God. And so are you, Sid. Hallelujah. I, I'll take that. How about you guys? You want to take it? <laughs> How about you guys? You want to take it? Well, James had a visitation to hell, and I've heard his description of this, and I'm going to tell you, hell is real. Uh, it so changed his life. Uh, he, he, he used a phrase which really got to me. We have a race against time because hell is real. Heaven is real. God is real. Jesus is real. You will need reality and reality is the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua HaMashiach Tzikenu. And if you, if you right now, within your heart and with your mouth, you would say, I believe Jesus died for my sins. I'm so sorry. In Jesus' name, give me the help to overcome them. Come inside of me. Be my Lord. Your words, say this. Get right with God because it's a race against time. Thank <laughs> you. 
Frances Metcalf was a seer, prophetess, who had amazing encounters in heaven with Jesus. She laid hands on James Maloney when he was a young man, transferring to him a supernatural ability to impart an end time anointing on an army of believers. Now James Maloney wants to empower you to manifest the glory of God throughout the earth. Call now and get James Maloney's Forerunner Foundation Package, which includes his powerful book, Overwhelmed by the Spirit, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching, A People of Signs and Wonders. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9254. In his book and CD teaching series, James Maloney draws from his years of theological training and powerful downloads straight from heaven to help you scripturally understand who the Holy Spirit is and how He will work in your life. Discover your unique God-given gifts and callings. Experience new supernatural strength and power to overcome every obstacle in obtaining your miracle. Receive the same anointing James Maloney received for this appointed time to walk in the miraculous and lead others to Messiah. Become aware of the angelic heavenly realm that wants to assist you and help you fulfill God's purpose and destiny for your life. James describes the Holy Spirit as the glorious intruder. He wants to empower you to be ready for the greatest move of God's Spirit ever unleashed on planet Earth. In James Maloney's three-part audio CD teaching, The People of Signs and Wonders, he includes supernatural prayers of impartation for you to become part of what he calls God's Dove Company of Believers, who will cultivate a powerful habitation of the Lord's presence to reach the world in the end times with miracles miracles, healing, signs, and wonders. There's going to be hundreds of thousands of Dove Company people that are going to be set forth to the forefront. As you listen to his teaching, the three best CDs, and as you read his brand new book, the, that special end time anointing will just pass right off of the pages, right off of the sound of this voice and enter into someone that's hungry. And this is your first step to walk into your inheritance. And it's up to you. Are you going to just say, ho-hum? Are you going to accept the call? You are called by God to be in this end time forerunner company. Don't miss out on getting James Maloney's Forerunner Foundation Package, which includes his powerful book, Overwhelmed by the Spirit, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching, A People of Signs and Wonders. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9254. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9254 or log on to Sid Roth. Roth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Can demons cause sickness such as cancer? And if you pray for a healing and you do not cast out the demon, maybe that's why people aren't being healed of diseases such as cancer. My guess says that when you cast the demon of cancer out, the healing begins. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide.